When I say that I've been playing Rec Room for five years now, your mind immediately jumps to one of three things. Number one, why wouldn't you? Rec Room's a great game. Number two, why would you? Rec Room's an awful game. Or even number three, what the fuck is a Rec Room? And I'm not going to try to say any one view is correct or not. I'm just surprised all three can coexist and still be 100% valid. I mean, in hindsight, yeah, I can kind of see it. These long-term players are pissed off, the newer players don't know anything about Rec Room's history, and the game only has about 3 million players playing it a month. Why are these long-term players so pissed off? If you just ask yourself that question, you joined in 2020 or later. Let's start by looking at some content. In 2018, we got Isle of the Lost Skull, Cyberjunk City, Rec Royale, Bowling, and Shadow of the Blood Moon. From 2019 to 2022, we got Stuntrunner, Drive-In, a tutorial, Rec Rally, and Showdown. It sounds like the two are on par, 5 and 5. Until I realized this is one year's worth of work versus the combined efforts of four. So yeah, content around this time was certainly lacking in quantity. But, but what about the quality side of things? Surely that must have been good. Stuntrunner is a generic time trials game where the first person to get to a speed boost goes faster. Drive-In is a paintball map almost universally disliked across all paintball fans. The tutorial Welcome to Rec is a tutorial. Rec Rally is a racing game where the place you're in once you reach this spot is where you're going to be for the entirety of the game unless someone else leaves or makes a major mistake. Showdown is just a reskin of paintball. So the quality of the content produced during this time was certainly lacking. But what about the quality of the game as a whole and not just the minigames in it? Surely that must have improved. It got worse, did it? Allow me to introduce you to the zombie book. If you killed someone, they had a chance to come back to life and couldn't be killed again. You must well count them as dead, but they can pick up guns, move around, shoot people. God mode. They had god mode. The history of this bug has been came out of nowhere, got worse, maybe fixed it, got worse, actually fixed it, came back. Reckon just does not know how to fix a problem. There was a small visual bug that happened when you grabbed the dodgeball that was attached to an active animation. It wasn't even that big of a deal, the trail just keep playing until the animation stopped and the ball hit something. And how did Reckon fix it? by replacing the fire trail with a more generic one. What? And not to mention all the lag and stuttering, Rackham just became an unoptimized mess over time. Rack Royale on PS4 used to run at 30, sometimes even 40 FPS. But when they optimized the game to run on Quest, they fucked up the frame rate on PlayStation, it now runs at 20. Huh? Or how every update ends up breaking several completely unrelated things. Updated walk, broke teleport. Updated rec royale, broke the player controller. Updated gun handles, broke PCR rendering, broke a basketball skin. Added memory leaks. Why? But even with all of its flaws and problems, I'm not just going to sit here and shit talk Rec Room for the next half hour. I'm going to sit over there and do it. Rec Room is a shitty game. Look, don't get me wrong, Rec Room still has some charm to it. But if you're new and you want to get into Rec Room, j just play Roblox instead, you're not missing out on much. If you're on a quest and you don't have access to Roblox, we still have access to VR chats. If you're on a PlayStation and you don't have access to either, you have a phone. Roblox. Which I find weird, because even though Rec Room has its problems, I still find it better than VR Chat and Roblox. Yet I'm more inclined to recommend VR Chat and Roblox instead of Rec Room. And I guess a part of that bias is due to Rec Room making bad decisions and ultimately upsetting their entire community. At least VR Chat knows what they're doing and respects the community enough not to do stupid shit. Okay, I take that back, but still, even though I think that Rec Room is much better at its core, I am way more willing to recommend VR Chat over it. Check that one off the list of things I thought I'd never say. And what else is on here? Oh goddamn. It's no surprise that Fortnite has horrible monetization. I'm pretty sure everyone knows that at this point. It's an endless cycle of a new item comes up, short and V-Bucks. V-Bucks can't be earned, so you buy V-Bucks and a new item comes out. So the question I have is, how does Requiem compare to this? I'm starting to see a pattern here. Some people like to defend Requiem's monetization, claiming that they need money to operate and they can't expect everything to be free. The thing is, they already had monetization in the past, it was far less egregious than it currently is, no one was complaining, and they were making a living off of it. They just took it overboard. In the past, Requiem's monetization consisted of purchasable tokens. But now it consists of purchasable tokens, monthly subscription, weekly bonus with exclusive items, paint inventions, keys, currencies, consumables, clothing, gift cards, ILL merch. Yeah, this is a bit much. It only gets worse as time goes on. You want to be able to test their next record original, then get Reckon Plus. Okay, maybe I'm being a bit too harsh on the monetization. I can get why some things like custom clothing lock on the paywall. It's still mainly for moderation. Roblox has a similar restriction with its custom clothing as well. But then there's the bullshit. Reckon has limited time items. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's just how these limited time items get used. In the past, they were restricted to season. Customs for Halloween, Sweaters for Christmas, Bunnings for Easter, you get the gist, and I feel there's nothing wrong with this. I feel these items have a reason to be limited to a season. But now everything's up in the air, both when and what gets limited time. Which one of these items released during Halloween? Time's up, you're wrong, they both released during Christmas. A generic skateboard, well, 
We can't have too many people using this. Limited time items have turned to a cash grab, rather than representing a season or event. Halloween costumes don't make sense to buy in February, and I doubt anyone wants to wear a winter sweater in the middle of July. I get that, but why in the hell do star-shaped sunglasses have to be limited time? Money. Everything Rec Room does, they do it for money. From the outright in-your-face obvious to the slightly more subtle. Slowly removing all forms of token rewards, inflating the prices of new items, changing the starter pack from $5 to $10, reversing the order of purchasable tokens to go from highest price to lowest price. All of these micromanagements. Just for the sake of money. Oftentimes, when we bring up the monetization on the Discord, Gotsev usually tries to defend it, saying that it's optional and that you don't need to buy it. I'm still going to argue that you are indirectly forcing your players to spend money on the game. It may not be forcing us in, give us $10, bitch. But it's more like, if you want to do anything remotely fun, you have to give us $10, bitch. The optional that Godseb is talking about is the premise that nothing you spend money on is going to affect gameplay. Sure, a pair of gloves won't make you better at the game. But what if you want some damn gloves? For certain cosmetics, there is only one way to get them, and that involves spending money on the game. And when there's only one way to do something, it's not the optional way, it's the way. And when the way involves spending money, you're kind of forcing a place to do so. And that, my friend, is what I consider to be forcing a place to spend money. It may not be buying victory, but sure as hell being the only way to do something involves spending money. If you're going on the premise that nothing you spend money on just affects gameplay, then let's shrek them down to its absolute bare bones minimum and put everything else behind a paywall. Sure, you don't have to buy it, you can already play the game. But what if you're not a fan of the default avatar? Sure, you can make money this way. But you're not earning it. There are games that make money, and there are games that earn money. The games that make money are just okay, and are usually littered with microtransactions. These would be your games like Fortnite, most EA games, Rec Room. These games all do the exact same thing too. The standard currency is a bitch to get for free, and all the cool stuff is locked behind it. These games don't do anything inherently special, they're just okay games with a lot of microtransactions. Then there are the games that earn money, the ones that truly deserve it. These are games like Terraria, Hot Dog Trojans, and Hand Grenades, most if not all Valve games. These games are great at their core, and feature little to no additional microtransactions. Any additional money spent on these games is usually by the choice of the player, not because they're doing it to get a certain item, but because they truly care about the game they are playing. Team Fortress 2 doesn't quite pass that test, but it's still an amazing game that deserves the money. There are a couple of tests a game needs to pass in order for me to consider that it deserves the money it's making. Bugs, innovation, trust, community, and hate. Or bitch for short. Let's put Rec Room through the bitch test and see how well it performs. Bugs! This one is self-explanatory. How stable is the game? How many technical issues does it have? How do the devs respond to these issues? Rec Room gets an immediate zero in this category. Let's recall a previous statement I've made. Allow me to introduce you to the zombie bug. If you killed someone, there's a chance they can come back to life and couldn't be killed again. The game will count them as dead, but they can pick up guns, move around, shoot people. God mode. They had god mode. The history of this bug has been came out of nowhere, got worse, maybe fixed it, got worse, actually fixed it, came back. Reckon just does not know how to fix a problem. This is completely glossing over infinite loading screens, sword hitboxes, paintball being completely unplayable in screen mode, CV2 sometimes disappear, and the entirety of dodgeball in that matter. Reckon runs off a spaghetti code, and it shows, and I'm not just saying that. There was a point in time where placing down three ships, selecting them, rotating them, then pressing delete all would allow you to fly anywhere. How the fuck did someone find this? Innovation. Seeing if the game did anything special that inspired new features and fallen games that came after it. Rec Room? It's got VR support. The things Rec Room did well, it does really well. It's just too bad most of the things it did well were all done in 2016 and 2017 and VR were still brand new. I actually don't know how to rate this one, because on the one hand, Rec Room set many standards of VR, like physics-based environments and social VR as a concept. But on the other hand, Showdown. The weapons on Showdown are weird. You fire a couple of times, the weapon does an animation, then you can fire again. There's VR titles back in 2016 that handle weapon reloading better, first one that comes to mind being H3 VR. Even games that came a little bit later, like Pavlov, handle weapon reloading better. Actually removing and inserting magazines is a lot more fun than watching a pre-made reload animation. Even VR titles like Killing Floor Recursion with pre-made weapon reload animations, they have better mechanics than Showdown because you can still press a button to reload the weapon early. Can't do that in Showdown, you gotta empty the entire gun if you accidentally fire one bullet. I mean, Rec Room did set examples, and they still do today. It's just that the examples they're setting today are examples of things not to do in a VR title, which were already set in stone back in 2016 by VR ports of games like Skyrim and Fallout 4. Scrolling, reload, animation, button-based interaction, I don't even know what to call this. Rec Room gets a 2 with innovation. The only innovations it made was the things it did in 2016. Trust, this is another self-explanatory one. How much can a game's community trust the developers to fix issues, improve things they don't like, and just make the game better? Rec Room often lies to us in our face, and every update in recent times has always brought more bugs and techniques as before. Issues already present in the game get fixed anywhere between two weeks to two years, so it's a feature territory, and the ones that do get fixed oftentimes show up again a few months later. Performance got progressively worse as time went on, with no announcement of ever doing anything about this. Rec Valley killed a lot of people's expectations with future Rec Room originals. It have solely focused on money, as evident by what I said earlier. It is becoming harder and harder to trust Rec Room with each passing day.
Community, arguably one of the most important aspects of a multiplayer game, a game's only as good as its community after all, and Rec Group advertises itself as a fun and welcoming place with a wholesome community. But that argument doesn't quite hold up the moment you enter a public room. Hi there! Ah, bro, stop packing and fucking teleporting! I have stick drift. It doesn't help that Rec Room flat out ignores crucial parts of the game in the tutorial, so people are going to call out these features as hacky. Would it kill it to add a sign that says VR players can teleport in the tutorial? There are five ways to figure that teleport exists in Rec Room. In the tutorial, only on VR, look at the movement mode settings. In your settings page, only on VR, look at a setting that doesn't mention teleport to then look at some subtext that does mention teleport. In paintball, only on five of the six maps, turn to your right to look at a sign that says VR players can teleport. Look for a try teleporting poster, most of these have been removed and the only surviving one I can find is in paddleball which is VR only. Look at Reckon's YouTube channel and look for a video about reporting of face. They tell people not to report people for teleporting, but they don't tell you what teleport is, they just say don't report people for it. So pop quiz, what if I'm a screen player, I'm not a fan of paintball, and I don't know that Reckon has a YouTube channel, how can I find out that teleport exists? After all, I need to be taught this kind of stuff, I don't want to accidentally report someone for teleport. Now this is a predicament. And considering a total of zero pancake games and a total of very few VR titles allow for teleportation, people are going to call it out as a form of cheating. Gotta tell people things they don't know, especially in a game like Rec Room where there's so many abnormal things. Trust me, man. I play Fortnite. You're fucking hacking. Have you ever went to your settings page? In fact, Rec Room does so little to publicize the fact that Teleport exists to where even VR players where it's publicized the most, they still don't know that Teleport exists. You're hacking. And the people that do know that Teleport exists but don't use it, they think it's an unfair advantage until you're brought with a wider range of creative insults, such as GAY! Yes, I teleport due to joystick drift, therefore legally I'm a homosexual that is attracted to guys. Yep, logic checks out. And I didn't even talk about the community as a whole, I just talked about one thing Rec Room decided not to tell people and its outcome. Look, I'm not trying to say Rec Room's community is all bad, in fact I've met some of my best friends on Rec Room. You can find some really amazing people here. But no matter what, there's always gonna be that one asshole. I'll give Rec Room a 4. Some good, some bad, a lot of ugly. Hate. How much do players hate the game, the devs, or both? Restating what I said earlier, Rec Room is a mixed bag. There's some people who love the game to death, there's people who hate the game to death. There's no in between, and a vast majority of players can agree the game gets more hate than it does love, just look at statistics. I'm not gonna read all this, but I'm gonna point out the big thing. 75 million accounts created ever. 3 million monthly players. Less than 5% of everyone who has ever played Rec Room still plays it at least once a month today. That is an impressively low number. I don't think you need me to tell you that a lot of people that don't play anymore also don't like the game. I mean, with a number that low, it's hard to say people actually enjoy playing Rec Room. So this just confuses me. What the hell are these ratings? How does a game with so much negative feedback surrounding it have overall good reviews? It should be obvious that the worse a game gets, the worse the reviews are. Yet somehow here, it's the exact opposite. How can the game have good reviews when the devs constantly introduce some of the worst bugs I've seen in a game? Most not getting fixed until years later, some still not fixed today. And then on top of that, they expect people to spend their entire life savings like it's nothing. The entire Discord community is complaining about this every single day, yet somehow, the game still has more than four stars on every single platform it's on. And I'm gonna go with my gun on this one. Most people that I know that have played Rec Room at least once before don't like it in its current state. Despite all the good ratings it gets, ask anyone on Discord, Reddit, or even in-game, and chances are they'll say that they don't like the game. So here's the end result. As you can tell, Rec Room falls flat in pretty much every single area. But this is just raw numbers. They don't tell a story. We need to get someone to process the results. What's this? It's test results. I want you to process them. You want me to do that? That's what I hired you for. I'm not qualified enough for this. Go find someone else, jackass. Well, that's processed, and let's take a moment to talk more about the bad side of Reckman, the part that no one talks about, and I'm not really sure why. Enter the world of copyright infringement. In other words, learn to be original. Power Rangers, Squid Game, Iron Man, Gundam, Mandalorian, Buzz Lightyear, you named it, Rec Room probably copied it at some point. And every time we bring this up on the Discord, someone always says it's just a parody, or a reference. Now let me tell you this, this is a parody, this is a reference. This is blank copyright infringement. Not convinced? In Terraria, the angler can sometimes ask for a clownfish and describes it as lost and looking for family. Finding Nemo is a story about a lost clownfish trying to find family. Finding Nemo did not invent the concept of a clownfish. This is a reference. Also Terraria, the star princess dress is just a blue dress. The only resemblance it has to Rosalina is the name. Nintendo did not invent the concept of a blue dress. This is a parody. Here's an original design. Here's the exact same design in-game with little to no major alterations. Yoshiyuki Tomino invented Gundam. This is copyright infringement. Still not convinced? The difference between parody and copyright infringement is the difference between being able to say Iron Man and War Machine and probably not being correct, and Iron Man and War Machine and being completely correct. So when you release this and my immediate reaction is, that's Gundam, then something is very clearly wrong here. 
the more I talk about this, the more I wonder how none of the big companies have found out. I mean, this is obviously copyright infringement. The entire Discord community can agree on that, but how is Disney not found out about this? And the test results are in! Yeah, I'm not surprised. There is no reason for Rekman to be doing this. This is just absurd. They're just abusing FOMO in order to maximize profit, and we've yet to be given a single explanation as to why they're even doing this. Now there's something to talk about. I'm not going to talk about every statement that was made here simply just because most of them have some truth to them or are just an opinion. The one big thing I'm going to dissect is this. I get that it is easy to call us money hungry, but we're just trying to stay afloat like everyone else. We are a very large company nowadays after all, everyone has to get paid somehow. It's not like we're taking more than we need either, but I can't really go in depth there. First off, this is way too hard to believe. On August 22nd, 2022, Rackham decided to remove the Power Ring retro presets from the store and in its place is a fucking bundle, are you serious? Then instead of apologizing or reasoning why this was done, they do it again with the War Machine Alloy Armor Black. That too was made limited time for no reason and out of nowhere. Going as far as to try to convince us that every item ever made has a chance to be limited time just because they were never said to be permanently in the store in the first place. They are pulling all the stocks and expect us to believe that this isn't great, that they're just trying to stay afloat and nothing more. $40 for a necklace, that is a steal for them. They're still the money on children's parents' credit cards. Listen, I know you need money to pay for servers, to pay employees, etc. But there comes a point where you're not trying to stay afloat, you're trying to build a throne out of $100 bills. But I just said we haven't been given a single explanation. This is an explanation. Did I lie? No, I haven't. We haven't been given a single explanation. Because we've been given several completely different explanations that have zero correlation to one another. Everything from trying to say this is meant for the later stage players, to trying to convince us that supply and demand exists in a video game. I am convinced they are not even trying to give a reasonable excuse. I'm convinced all they're doing is giving a half-assed excuse to address the question at hand without first fact-checking to see if what they're saying is even remotely believable. Sticking with any one of these explanations, not this one, would just be a question mark, but somewhat reasonable. Considering all of them are floating around, it just looks like a big cover-up. The most truthy explanation we've been given is from Star Centurion, just because it sounds true. Big company, 200 people. Everyone needs to get paid, understandable. But if that's the truth we are going with, then let's fact check it with some math. The average salary of game dev in Seattle is roughly 100,000. Requiem consists of 300 people. 100,000 times 300 gives us 30 million. Let's add on an extra 10 million for our expenses. Now let's say out of the 3 million active players, only 1 million of them actually spend money on Rec Room. 40 million divided by 1 million gives us 40. But most major platforms take a 30% cut of this profit, so we need to add 30% to 40, which gives us 52. 1 million people need to give Rec Room $52 by the end of the year for them to stay in business. That doesn't sound like a lot. To put this into perspective, that's 7 months of Rec Room Plus, or 6 $10 token packs, or 2 amulets of elsewhere. And what are people who spend more than $52 on this game? I know people who have spent $100 on this game. I know people who have spent $200 on this game. Some have spent well over 1000 And then there's people outside of the 1 million that are probably going to buy a month of Rec Room Plus or a $10 token pack. And given the math, I can safely say, we don't need any of this. Rec Room is actively going out of their way to sabotage their own game for the sake of profit. Do you expect me to just sit here and do nothing about this? You're crazy if you think that, because I'm going to stand here and do nothing about this. Hey, Rec Room sabotaging their own game means the market's going to open up a little bit. Please continue, I've been looking for an alternative for a while. Look, I played the living shit out of Rec Room and enjoyed every moment of it. I said that in past tense. There's no reason to play modern day Rec Room with all of its problems, lack of optimization, spaghetti code, monetization, community, etc. You're better off playing something like VRChat instead. But it wasn't always like this. Rec Room was never perfect, but it was certainly better. Rec Room was developed by people who cared and wanted to make the VR game everyone talked about. It used to run much smoother, content updates were quality and quantity, there were less bugs and the ones that did exist had no effect on gameplay were just funny oversights. A lot of people defend modern day Rec Room saying it has more content than it used to. Little Planet 3 has more content than Little Planet 2, does that mean Little Planet 3 is better? No, it just has more stuffing. Rec Room had a soul, and they lost it once they entered the mobile industry. I don't want to pull a generic back and say, but Rec Room really was just much better back in the day. There's no reason to play modern day Rec Room, you know, the old Rec Room never come back. It makes me sad. Rec Room used to be a game I can shut my brain off and play for hours when I'm bored, but I don't have any other game I can do that with, and I just don't like Rec Room anymore. <sighs> what do you mean you don't like Rec Room? You're a Rec Room YouTuber! Calling me a YouTuber is a bit much. I only do this as a hobby when I'm bored. Also, who the hell invited you? I did. After you said you didn't like Rec Room, I had to invite him. Who the hell invited you? You did. You want me to process those test results? That's right. You held a gun to my head. That is correct. Wait, why are you even here in the first place? You never explained why you don't like Rec Room. But I did. 
No, you didn't. You just explained all its flaws. But the flaws of the game is the reason why people don't like it. That's not true. Have you seen how popular Fortnite is? I'm just here to the F word around here. What? Fuck? No. Frick? Why don't you like saying fuck? No. Fortnite. What's wrong with Fortnite? Fortnite is a stupid game with a stupid economy. The game itself isn't fun, or interesting, or good. Go here, get gun, go here, mine tree, have a fight, heal up, swarm shrinks, go there, have another fight, you die, you die, you die, and you die. Maybe you might win, do the entire thing again, you die, you die. It just doesn't have variation, the economy, what the fuck is this? Your currency is in the form of V-Bucks, and how do you get them? Okay, I think I know the answer. Playing the game. Oh. Hopes and dreams? I sent the answer like 18 minutes ago. In Fortnite, the only consistent way to get V-Bucks is by purchasing them. You can't earn them by playing the game, the battle pass barely gives you anything, and everything even remotely cool is locked behind some form of a paywall. If you're poor or just don't want to support the game, your options are extremely limited. Unless you're on PlayStation and you have PlayStation Plus, then you get some of the few free cosmetics in the entire game. For a limited time. And these packs aren't even that cool either. And just like Rec Room, I didn't like this game either. It's nothing but a repetitive, boring, luck-based, unbalanced, sweatfist fuck of a game with devs who only care about making profit. Hold on. You have the Blue Team Leader skin, which was the first ever PlayStation Plus exclusive skin. And the pickaxe didn't even come out until Chapter 1, Season 9. Yeah, and those wings cost V-Bucks. You can't get those for free. Hold on. Are you telling me you spent money on a game you didn't like, and then proceeded to play the game again long after you knew you didn't like it? I can explain. I will admit I fell into the Fortnite trap, but not entirely by choice. I played all the way from Season 1 to halfway through Season 9. I even have the umbrellas to prove it. I thought you didn't like Fortnite. I don't! The reason why I kept playing was my friends kind of forced me into it. It was the only thing they played, so I played along with them. Did I have fun? Yeah. Wait. But that fun came from messing around with friends. Even if you don't like a game, adding friends to the mix will always make it fun. The game itself is still a repetitive, boring, luck-based, unbalanced, sweatfest fuck of a game with devs who only care about making profits. But I kept playing because my friends wanted to. The way you say it, it makes it sound like a generic anime plot. You know, with the power of friendship, I'll be able to overcome all obstacles, you know, that type of shit. Wait a minute, what does Fortnite have to do with Rec Room? You're the one that asked me what was wrong with Fortnite. Wait, what does Fortnite have to do with Rec Room? I'm glad you asked. Most of the problems I just mentioned are problems that also exist in Rec Room. It just stings way worse knowing at one point none of these problems existed in Rec Room. The gameplay became boring with a lack of any good updates. The community isn't the best. And just like Fortnite, anything even remotely cool is locked behind some form of paywall. Tokens are a bitch to get without money, so if you're poor or don't want to support the game, your options are extremely limited. And the game itself is nothing more than just a dumpster fire of a code base. The fact it even kinda works is a miracle. Hell, it doesn't even do that half the time. When you say it like that, you make it sound like you don't like Rec Room. I don't. The game is mismanaged as monetization is so bad it makes Fortnite look good, and the last good content update was all the way in 2018, and I only kept playing it because my friends wanted to do contests. Did you have fun working on those contests? Yeah, it was fun, hard work, but I enjoyed it. So what you're saying is you hate the company, not the game. No, I hate both. You make no sense! And I'm just confused I'm not understanding. Look, man, Rec Room is changing, and you just gotta embrace change. I mean, it's not like what Rec Room is doing is actively destroying the game as a whole. Why do you think that? Around April 20th, 2020, Easy Anti-Cheat was added to the game. This is a bad anti-cheat. First off, it's stupid easy to crack the code due to it being a popular anti-cheat. Performance with Easy Anti-Cheat absolutely shits itself, not to mention it causes way more problems than it actually fixes. Look, I get that devs wanted an anti-cheat. But why Easy Anti-Cheat? When there are so many other options, why do you choose this one? Around April 29th, 2020, it was announced that the watch would soon be redone in a new style, one that's easier to develop and is more performant. Easier to develop and is more performant. Almost three years later, the watch is still in Frankenstein stage between half old, half new. Updates to the watch are far and few between. It's obvious it's taking much longer to develop the new UI than it was the old UI. On the performance side of things, the UI used to shit itself upon opening. The game straight up froze every time you tried to open it in the play menu. It took an entire year and a half before the watch got its first big optimization patch. And this is just the technical side of things. The new UI is painful to use and just screams bad design. Scrolling doesn't work in VR. Everything is cluttered everywhere and it's hard to find anything. What the fuck is this layering technique? I get change needs to happen, but when every single change that's happened in the past two and a half years has had a negative impact on the game, you start to question if that change was necessary or not. The lighting was changed in 2018 to allow for UGC lights. This is a change that was necessary. But putting colors on a submenu within a submenu on a separate page from the shapes in the new UI? Why did this need to happen? And the best part is, none of our complaints have done anything even remotely close to working towards a solution. If Reckham truly cared, they could have at the least acknowledged our complaints. But they're just not doing anything. Most of the issues with the new UI that have existed since day one still exist today, two and a half years later. I think you're over-exaggerating a little. Yeah, Rackham has made improvements to the UI and even addressed some issues with people. 
They may address the issues, but it's a bare minimum fix just so we can shut up about it. When we said the watch was flat and boring, they raised the top by two centimeters. When we said the buttons weren't fun to press, they added a green outline. When we said the scrolling was a bitch, they shrunk the watch and made it orange. When we said that made scrolling even harder, they made it bigger, but not all the way big, just big enough. When we said scrolling was still a bitch, they flat out removed it for six months before adding an ultimate scrolling method, which is better, but still far from good. They can't be bothered to actually fix several of the underlying problems the UI has, such as being flat and boring and hard to use. The only actual fixes we actually got from the watch was better button pressing and the watch not completely shitting itself upon opening. You just said Rec Room doesn't fix stuff. And then you just mentioned two things they fixed. Except the fixes came out a full year and a half after watch came out. And when it takes an entire year and a half for the watch to not shit itself upon opening, you start to question if the devs care or not. I think you're forgetting that optimizations can be made overnight. No, I just don't think the devs care about optimizations. Here's a basic button in the new UI style. You know, four polygons, enough texture. Basic stuff. Except it's not. What are, what you, are you talking, talking about? about? If you thought Rec Room used an alpha texture for the buttons, then think again. In an AMA, Gribbly, the CCO of Rec Room, stated that transparency is hard to render. Now, I'm not a game dev, so I don't know exactly how true that statement is. But I do know one thing. Polygons are also hard to render. Where are you going with this? When the home screen used to be rounded for VR, you used to be able to go up to it and look at the corners. And wait a minute, this isn't a curve. These are segments. And then you go and count the individual segments, and you can count 10 polygons just to make up one corner. Do some math, and that's 44 polygons for one button. Why was it done like this? And it's not just the buttons. Every curve consists of 10 polygons instead of just using an alpha texture. This is just excessive. Also, remember that part where Gribbly pointed out that transparency is hard to render? Well, what if we had four transparent shapes composed with, again, 44 polygons each? That would be funny. There was absolutely zero thought into putting any basic optimizations into this UI. Yeah, it sounds like you're over-exaggerating. I'm not. No, you are. It's just a menu, and it not being optimized is not the end of the world. But if they can't be bothered to fix something as simple as a menu, what makes you think they're going to care about anything? GET TO THE POINT ALREADY! What? All you've been doing is repeating yourself. All you've been saying is about Reckon's monetization, Reckon's bugs, Reckon's technical difficulties. That's all you've been saying. What's your point? My point? WHY DON'T YOU LIKE Rec Room? Let's go back to the very beginning. Five years ago on this day, I made my account on Uncle Future would bring. I was looking for VR chats, but PlayStation didn't have VR chats, so the next best thing I saw was Rec Room. From the start, I thought there would just be a game I'd play once or twice just for laughs. I didn't think I'd get so invested so quickly. But before I knew it... It was already too late. My fate was sealed. There's no going back now. Rec Room Quills became a most played game. It had everything I wanted in the game and everything I didn't know I needed in the game. It was VR chats. It was Roblox. It was Little Big Planet. It was everything and so much more. I very quickly fell in love with it. From playing original game modes that never seemed to stop ending, to making random things for the limited sandbox knowledge I had at the time. There was no end inside of things to do in Rec Room. And then Reckham took a turn. They started advertising the game towards children to attract as many new customers as possible, and it got to a point where these ads were so bad, I was embarrassed to say I knew where Reckham was, let alone that I had several thousand hours in it. But this didn't stop me. I continued creating and participated in several contests. The target demographic may have changed, but the game was still the same. At least for a while. It was around this time Reckham started becoming boring for me. We haven't had any good content in a while, the most recent release was an extension of activity I didn't play, and the games I once loved got stale. The only thing I enjoyed doing was creating with friends, but even that started to feel samey. September 29th, 2020 was when we saw Rec Rally, and after almost two years of no content, I was hoping this would be good. But the end result was far from tolerable. After comparing Rec Rally to what we got in 2018, I started questioning the state of the game. Was it going downhill? Was it even fun anymore? Or am I still playing just for the sake of wanting to relive all those memories I made just two years prior? One by one, everything I once loved about this game was taken out of my hands, smashed to bits, then returned to me in a mangled up, butchered state that just mocks what the original used to be. Everything I once loved about this game, gone. In the blink of an eye, all without warning, sucked into the void, never to be seen again, by the same people who graciously gave me these things all those years ago. All because they are so blinded by what makes them profit, they can't stop for two seconds to think about the community. I can follow the path of greed. Which is exactly how we got to this point. I used to cherish this game, but now I despise everything about it. Dang, that's deep. You asked a question, I gave you an answer. I cared so much for this game, but now I want nothing more than for all to be forgotten. If what you're saying is that Reckham is in the gutter, then why are people still playing in it? Because there's no alternative. That's a pretty blunt way of putting it. Rec Room is digging their grave deeper and deeper with each passing day, yet people are still playing the game, even though they absolutely hate the shit that Rec Room is pulling. 
And that's because there's no other game that is even remotely close to Rec Room, because every other would-be alternative is either purely a social game, purely a creation game, or purely a game about playing. It's not a combination of three like Rec Room is, and even if you are only playing for just the creation, or just the social, or just the playing parts, there's still hurdles determining if you can play that game. And so the reason why people keep coming back to Rec Room day and day again is not because it's a good game, it's because what else is there? And so the moment a tried and true alternative to Rec Room does release, Rec Room is royally fucked. In fact, I'm pretty sure Rec Room is currently in the process of royally fucking themselves over right now. Anyone who's tried modding Skyrim of Fallout 4 on PlayStation know the mods there suck and are very limited. This isn't the fault of the developers, this is the fault of Sony's policies. Sony's policies don't allow the use of custom assets, which makes modding these games a little bit difficult since the only thing you do is change your jump height, inventory space, allow attachments on guns you weren't normally able to do basic stuff. The reason why VRChat isn't on PlayStation is because it relies on the fact that people are using a game engine to add content to the game, something Sony doesn't like. Rec Room Studio is both of these things. On paper, the idea of using a game engine is incredible. In fact, I would love to be able to make all kinds of things I would normally be able to do with a maker pen, but did you forget how Sony's going to react to this? They don't like game engines. We've been told that Sony's fine with this just because there's no code involved. Sure, keep telling yourself that. Good luck convincing me that a modified Unity is not a game engine just because it's using ZV2 instead of code. This is just Bolt. And let's just say, sure, Sony's okay with this because there's no code, it's in-game stuff in a new way. There's still the elephant in the room of something you can't do in-game, and that is import assets you made in Blender. As a recap, PlayStation mods for Skyrim and Fallout 4 are not the best. How bad are they? Well, as compared to Xbox. On Xbox, you can do almost everything you can with the PC version, including custom assets. And for PlayStation, well, you can turn Dog Meat into a death claw and give him a silly name, so what more can you ask for? And with Rec.com's main selling point being the fact you can import custom assets, I'm pretty sure once Sony finds out that Rec.com Studio exists, they're going to delist the game from PlayStation. And at that point, Rec Room is truly fucked. Because you're stating what I said earlier, PlayStation doesn't have VR chat, PlayStation doesn't have Roblox, PlayStation only has Rec Room. And so I wouldn't be surprised if half of your audience is on PlayStation. You're getting rid of half of your audience by releasing Rec Room Studio. Well, I'm off to a funeral. Whose funeral are we going to? Rec Room's funeral. But Rec Room's still alive. It seems like just yesterday I was introduced to this game. So many memories. It's been fun. Hey, look at all this. What are you two eggheads been working on? Nice catch. This is a bucket. Gentlemen, synchronize your death watches. Oh, wait, 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 wait! Send you to me. I've done nothing but teleport bread for three days. There! There, have you been sending it? I have one more thing I need to finish first. Part of me wants to believe that all this is just temporary, that Rec Room can change. But the vast majority of me knows that Rec Room has changed. This is Rec Room now. A greedy, unoptimized, bug-fested game. And I'm done with it. Five years is long enough. But I still have one more thing to finish, something that I started long ago. And I'm gonna make sure that it is the best that it can possibly be.